between the hits of the two opposite mirrors by the flash of light. But what happens if we place our clock into a rocket blasting through outer space? The flash of light still moves between the mirrors at the speed of light, yet the path it must traverse is considerably longer. But because we have agreed that the clicks of mirror hits, hence the length of that path, corresponds to the length of a second, one second aboard the rocket is of course much longer than one second on Earth. Thus, time in the fast-moving rocket passes more slowly. You see, it's important that you never stop asking questions. See you next time. Because we don't experience any relativistic effects, time being relative really challenges our common sense. Even if we race down the road at 200 kilometers an hour, we don't feel Einstein's time stretch. But if we came closer to the speed of light, relativistic effects would make themselves felt. And not only speed, but also the Earth's gravitation can change the scale of time. That's a key aspect of satellite navigation. The new European system Galileo couldn't do without Einstein's theory. It's a matter of billionths of a second. Arno Schroth and his colleagues are investigating an atomic clock to find out how precise and reliable it really is. Different atomic clocks work in different ways. That's why these researchers at Oberpfaffenhofen near Munich are developing new methods of synchronizing atomic clocks. The Galileo navigation system only works if all the satellite clocks involved are ticking in sync. To coordinate the satellite clocks, the scientists have to compare them with a standard clock on Earth. The deviations are then transmitted from the ground back to the satellites to be used as corrections. From there, the data are broadcast to the navigation receivers in aircraft, cars and other vehicles. But time is relative. Due to the varying influence of gravity or of the satellite speed, the clocks may get out of sync, and that affects the precision of the navigation. Galileo satellites will be flying at heights of 24,000 kilometers above the ground. Because the Earth's gravitational field is weaker there, the clocks go faster, relative to Earth-bound clocks. The satellite's prodigious speed acts in the opposite direction. It causes the clocks to slow down. The relativistic effects on the satellite clocks can be calculated with the help of Einstein's famous formulas. That's easy to do. For Galileo, the relativistic effect amounts to 40 microseconds a day. That corresponds roughly to a distance error of 12 kilometers a day. The researchers have to compensate for that potential error. Before liftoff, they set the satellite clocks to go more slowly on the Earth. Then, once in space, they will run at the required rate. The scientists at the German Aerospace Center are testing how well that works with the help of receivers on the ground. They can measure the deviation of the satellite clocks. But not everything that influences the rate of the clocks can be determined using Einstein's equations. Nature is hard to predict and calculate. Because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, its gravitational field is not completely uniform. That means the satellite clocks will go faster or slower, depending on their position in space. Variations in the rate of the clocks are also caused by the satellite's elliptical orbits, as they travel around the Earth at varying altitudes and speeds. Navigation engineers in Munich have been studying the errors that arise through this effect alone. They find that changes in satellite clock rates on elliptical orbits can amount to an inaccurate...